Good people, I'm Dmitry, and I've always tried to stay clear of bad audio products, and for the longest time, I've wanted to try shit audio, and today is the day. She, she, she. How do you say that without getting demonetized? Good luck. You guys should know by now that my gaming accessories and peripherals are never constant. I have the privilege of switching out keyboards every few months. I have three daily driver mice and my selection of audio follows the same behavior until now. I have finally settled on a proper gaming audio set that will be on my gaming station for a while. Let me tell you why after this. The new Corsair K95 Platinum RGB XT lets you program the six macro keys on the left to work beautifully with Stream Deck for endless customization while you stream or game, plus PVT keycaps, a comfy wrist rest, and a quality K95 body. Check it out below. All right, so let me retrace my audio history for a bit of context. So when the Sennheiser GSX-1000 came out, the experience was absolutely incredible with their binaural engine that opened up any audio environment. And for non-competitive gaming, it was brilliant. I did a full audio experience piece right over here. And the difference between enabling that 7.1 uh, surround sound experience versus non is uh, they did a really good job and it is one of the best implementations of surround sound I've ever heard. I really love the natural soundstage expansion combined with open pair of headphones especially was brilliant but I eventually swapped it out for something more powerful because the GSX-1000 could not drive some of my headphones. And this is where the element comes in from JDS Labs. This is a really nice amplifier and DAC with beautiful tones and a lot of power behind it. I was using the element for months and the only reason I stopped it was because it required wall power and I was going through a stage of like reconfiguring all my cable management and I wanted something that was running off a single USB port. And I also was looking for something that had a mic input on the same breakout box, which is when the latest Sound Blaster X3 had entered the chat. And this is a really good sound card with lots of IO and their own variation of surround sound rendering with the full software suite available. And by default, the X3 in stereo mode is fantastic, beautiful sound, uh, can drive any of my headphones, but it is so feature rich and I was never using any of its like surround sound, SXFI, any noise cancellation profiles that I actually switched to a USB headset instead for simplicity sake. And this is the HyperX Orbit S. This pair has planar magnetic drivers, which are incredible with absolutely delicious bass quality. Yes, that's right, delicious bass quality. I've been editing with them too. But once the full shade came out, it was time to go back to the roots with a proper comfortable uh, pair of headphones. So now we're all caught up to present day. So with regards to the Fula 3, I love the simplicity of this package, cool industrial look with metal casing, small on-desk footprint, no driver software needed, and we've got a quality headphone out and mic in. The volume knob is kind of big for the body with a not so visible indicator, but it's smooth and stable. You can plug in powered monitors at the back and we also have an analog input if you want to use the full 3 just as an amplifier. There's also an additional USB port that can be powered via a battery bank so you can use this thing as an amplifier when you're mobile. It kind of sucks it's not USB type C, it's 2020 after all. And only a 3.5 mm headphone jack instead of a full size, but that's why the hell exists, which is bigger, better, more expensive and gives users more control. It's really interesting to see how both of these are labeled as like gaming amp DAX uh, because of the mic input, but I also appreciate the lack of any software because I don't really see it as necessary. For example, I never play with surround sound on. I don't really change my EQ profiles. I just have my good pair of headphones that I use for gaming and that is it. So when I don't need a microphone, the HD 5 x is fantastic with the Fula 3. At half the power, I get wonderful sound, so incredible detail, somewhat airy bass, nice sound stage, and that for games that I play is absolutely the perfect formula. I'm really comfortable with the 5 x and the Fula 3 in terms of positional awareness. So on games like COD, EFT, and of course CSGO, this audio setup has not failed me once.
Now you might be thinking, what is the main difference between the Fula 3, which is an entry level and expensive DACM combo, versus something that might already be included with your gaming headset, like this USB sound card that is included with my G Pro X headset. So first of all, power is a major difference here. The Fula 3 can drive my HD 5.8X no problem, my uh, HE 4XX planar magnetics as well. Uh, while the USB dongle, it simply cannot. At 100% volume here, I feel like it's still missing a lot of the detail. I feel like I need more volume to get the most out of the headphones, while the Fuller 3, it's good. It's uh, adequate enough to support majority of headphones uh, that will you'll be happy with being powered by a $99 DAC amp combo. And the second thing is detail. I feel like there's more perceived layering with the Fuller 3 versus using the USB dongle. While this thing has a little extra bass, which has surprised me and like not bad bass either, but the Fuller 3 is very neutral and there is more layering in the sound, more definition overall. And stepping things up with the Hell, man, this thing is legit. So it requires wall power, it lights up to complement the red exterior. We have a gain switch beside the full 6.3 millimeter headphone jack and even microphone level knob to control your voice volume. So the main difference between the two is that the Hell is four times more powerful than the Fuller 3. We have more controls here, more knobs and like an actual uh, mic uh, gain, which is awesome. And this thing has a mic stereo input versus a standard mono. And to be honest, the extra power of the Hell isn't my style. I'm perfectly satisfied with the power output of the full 3 Plus. I really appreciate that compact footprint of that amplifier, but let me know which microphone sounds best to you. Uh, between all these products. So this is the Barebones Fuller 3. It has a pretty loud vocal pickup and you cannot adjust the levels on the actual device. You can go into the settings and reduce the level if this thing is too sensitive. But there is a bit of processing happening, but the processing is compression. So compressing the, the voice, adding a bit of more bass and uh, there's no uh, aggressive noise cancellation for the background. So I would say it's a good thing and I've never had a complaint. What you listen to now is that recorded by the Hell, and given we have actual full-on microphone gain control, that is great in case you're peaking or you're not loud enough, you can adjust that on the fly. And this one, I think, sounds slightly cleaner. Uh, there is a bit more processing, a little bit more bass, but overall, it doesn't sound uh, as harsh as the Fuller 3 in comparison. They both sound pretty decent, but the Hell definitely has a bit of an edge. Finally, here's the X3 by Sound Blaster. I think this one has the best sound cancellation of the background. It's a much cleaner noise floor, um, but the processing that is happening here is also brilliant. I think it's the best sounding microphone out of the entire amp DAC collection that I have here. So really good job. And uh, it sounds natural, detailed, nice bass in there, but it is a bit quiet. So you have to boost the actual gain for the microphone to be more audible in game. It is pretty cool to see this type of quality in terms of microphone and sound on an AmpTac combo that is only $20 more expensive than the Full 3, but it also comes with your traditional gaming loaded features. So I guess that makes sense. And finally, here's a sound sample of the microphone plugged directly into my motherboard. And this one has a bit more digital noise in the background because of all the interference and all the hardware that's happening. But it still sounds pretty decent. I do think the Sound Blaster X3 is the best out of the four. But let me know if you agree and which one sounded best to your ears. And the last piece of the puzzle is the gaming headset. So this is my gaming headset of choice. This is the Game One or rebranded by Drop PC37X that complements Fula 3 perfectly. It is open back so I'm not completely audio isolated from my space and that is a benefit for me. This is by far the most comfortable gaming headset design. Its audio signature is sharp with a flat bass profile and I do not miss a sound. Plus the microphone is fantastic, kind of like the benchmark for gaming headset when it comes to voice quality. And when I don't need the microphone, it's HD 5.8X all the way. Now what these two products made me realize is that Shit Audio is doing a really good job trying to cater to the gaming audience delivering premium quality uh, DAC amp combos with mic inputs that don't suck. In my opinion, this is the way it should be without all the value add gaming things like surround sound, noise cancellation, EQs and profiles and etc. In my experience, I've never used those things extensively and always revert to like default stock configuration on any DAC amp combo 
headset or whatever. I really appreciate the convenient plug and play bare bones nature of the Fuller 3 over any other DAC amp combo that has come through my space, which is why the Fuller 3 and the HT5NX plus the PC37X slash Game 1 is my perfect gaming audio setup. Really curious to hear what is your perfect gaming audio setup. Let me know in the comments. I'm Dmitry. Thanks so much for watching. Check out this other relevant content. All the links will be listed in the description below for all them products. I'll talk to you guys in the next video.